Hi, I'm Kim Spencer, Director of Donor Relations and Events. We have created a presentation to share with you about the changes we have made since a health crisis began in order to keep our clinic open and safe. I hope this is informative for you. We would love to answer any questions you may have, so please be thinking of them while we are watching this presentation. And now I'd like to introduce Larry Trombor, our Executive Director. Well, thank you for tuning into the webinar. Uh, my name is Larry Trumbor, the Executive Director at the Lackey Clinic. And I just wanted to um, thank you for um, spending some time with us. The purpose of this webinar is to um, let us let you know what has happened at the clinic for the past three months, communicate where we're heading, and then let you know how you can help. So I wanted to put um, the, the last three months into perspective. And, and so when we were doing strategy uh, back in 2018, we were expecting a little um, bit of what we called a hurricane, that 2019 was going to be a transition for us because of Medicaid expansion. And so the hurricane uh, was a result of a bunch of unknowns, but Lackey was going to stay focused on our mission of helping uninsured patients or uh, patients that were medically disadvantaged. And so that red arrow was just, we we're going to stay focused. And then in 2020, Lackey would come out and weather the storm and come out on this um, smooth seas. But um, we all know that that wasn't the case. In fact, uh, we came out of the hurricane where we uh, lost about 60% of our patients and we were back to almost breaking even of what we had lost. And then we got hit with COVID um, 2020, and we say that's a tsunami. Uh, and so we're in the midst of it, but as, um, as we did last year, we said, what is it that Lackey's gonna do? And, and we all agreed as a staff and a board that we are gonna be mission focused. And so for the last uh, 12 weeks, we have remained open to continue giving care to our patients. And so the purpose of today is sort of explain what the uh, tsunami was to us and then how we are dealing with it. There are three different phases. Uh, the first phase was the response. And, and so again, as a leadership team, we had to decide how do we, how does, what does the organization do and how do we continue delivering our mission? Uh, we have gone through the response phase. We are now in the recovery phase and we, we really want to say that that's a reimagining phase. And um, through the response phase, there are things that we have done like telehealth that have just actually been improvements to the business. So in the reimagining phase, it's what is it that we are going to do to bring us back to steady state, uh, but also take advantage of the changes that sort of um, came to us because we had to. And then there's the resiliency phase, which uh, we will not be there for at least a couple months, maybe till the end of the year, and that is figuring out long-term what the clinic will evolve to. So the response phase um, on the left, we were open to patients, and you see the beautiful pathway leading into the clinic where um, we used to be full all the time and the waiting room um, was always, uh, there were patients waiting to get in and, and going to the pharmacy, but uh, almost immediately back in mid-March, we had to um, put a fence around. So there's barbed wire fence there on the right, and it was close to clinic. Let's not let anybody in. Uh, we kept uh, 17 of the 30 staff here to operate, uh, but we had to shut down the dental. Uh, the admin staff that could work at home did. Uh, we had no volunteers uh, because a lot of those um, were older volunteers, and so we did not want to compromise anybody. And we communicated that our response was to stay open, and we were going to figure out how to operate safely. And the community just um, was just heartfelt what the community did for us. We got calls for financial support, and uh, Bank of America offered, you know, do you need some money? And, and we came up with a, a project of a bunch of different things in the project that said, you know, we needed 14,000. And, and the next day I get a call back and said, we can't do 14,000, but will you take 25,000? We had um, people calling us to, to bring us food. Uh, we had people calling and say, how can we pray for you? Uh, there was the media that was interested. And so it just, it was such a heartfelt uh, response that we knew that we were doing God's work uh, because of the, the way the community was reaching out to us. 
I'd like to um, share with you some of the other staff and, and their, um, their comments on, on how we are doing. Hi, I'm Dr. Jill Cattell, Medical Director at Lackey Clinic. We've made a number of changes since COVID and probably the biggest one is doing telemedicine visits. This has enabled us to be able to stay in contact with our patients, provide continuity of care, and I think it has worked out very well for our patients. Hi, I am Terry Barris, the dental coordinator here at Lackey Clinic. And since COVID-19, we have added quite a few things to ensure the safety of our patients and our staff and volunteers. So we've increased our PPE that we wear, including face shields, uh, double mask, and gowns. And we have also added a fume extractor. So when we are doing any procedures with aerosols, that takes the aerosols out of the air. We've also put in UV lights in our air handlers so that as any um, air goes up in there, it is then sterilized. So we've added a lot of things to make everyone safe. Hi, I'm Diane Guzzi. I'm the staff pharmacist here at the Lackey Clinic. And since the beginning of COVID, we've made a few changes here in the pharmacy. The first is we are filling as many 90-day prescriptions as possible to limit the number of times patients actually have to come and pick up their medication. The second is we now have the availability to mail most prescriptions to patients who are unable to get here to pick them up. And the third is we have changed our pharmacy pickup window to a window on the, out, the side of the building right next to the patient parking lot, which makes it a little easier for the patients to pick up their meds. Hi, my name is Gaznir Mason and I'm a counseling resident. Since COVID hit, these are the safety measures we've been taking to keep our clients safe. Genesis has continued to offer services in partnership with Lackey through telehealth counseling. Having sessions online has allowed us to be flexible and provide a continuous service that's able to meet the needs of our clients, keep them safe, and provide additional support. I am so thankful, grateful, and happy to serve as a Lackey team member and provide a service that's much needed in such a time as this. Hi, I'm Pastor Chip Fralick, and along with Pastor John Seltzer, we coordinate the pastoral care team at Lackey Clinic. During this time of the COVID uh, pandemic, we continue our work uh, not uh, on site too much, but praying for people and for the staff and working with the staff one day a week to uh, hopefully help them make their way through this difficult time. We ask God's blessings upon you and upon uh, all of our patients and their families. So we, um, I just wanted to cover a little bit of the physical changes that we had to come up with. So during the response phase, you know, we closed the clinic, but then we started to say, well, how can we uh, what safety measures did we need to put into place? And there, were a lot, there was a lot of information uh, that we had to sift through and things were pretty fluid almost on a daily basis. But uh, these were the physical changes that were recommended. Uh, on the dental side, we had to shut it because of the aerosol producing procedures that we had. And so we had a couple different steps of uh, protection. Dry shield goes in the mouth and that sucks the first line of uh, aerosols that come out and then uh, Terry covered the fume extractor down there. We have four of those um, to suck in the aerosols that um, come out of the mouth beyond the, the dry shield. And then we had the air uh, cleaners and purification. And the last step was we, we did not want people to take any germs home, so we put in a washer and dryer. On the top right, you can see Greta there dressed up, and the PPE is um, the first line of defense for the people that are um, seeing patients that potentially have any kind of infectious disease. Uh, we also, uh, the people working on the right, uh, that's just what we, we wear uh, in the office anytime we're uh, close together or walking through the common areas. And then uh, telehealth, you'll hear a little bit more about that. Uh, I did mention the community and how they um, reached out to us. And so on the left side, on the income side, Holy Bank of America gave us 25,000 United Way uh, Herndon, uh, Impact 100, and Delta Dental also chipped in, so we got at least $70,000, and then there were some donors that, that gave us money as well. Uh, again, we used that money to make the clinic safer, uh, to buy the equipment and the supplies needed, and also the communications and technology we needed to, to migrate to telehealth. To put that into perspective, um, 
you know, our budget is there on the left and, and our budget's around $2 million. And so 70,000 of that was you know, less than 5%, but it was, it was needed because of what we needed to do to, to, to keep the clinic open, uh, to keep our staff, staff, patients and volunteers safe. To put all this in, in perspective in the timeline, uh, March, 2020, uh, we closed and had to do a bunch of changes. Um, April, we went through the uh, decision process of what do we need to do to modify, who did we need to communicate, and then how do we utilize the resources we were giving. May, um, our plans for reopening became clear. We continued the televisits. Uh, we brought our, some of our staff back, and then June 1st, um, we reopened the building to have, see patients uh, on site and uh, to have dental uh, reopen. August and September, uh, we're looking at doing our low cost dental, better vision. Those are things that we talked about in the spring that got delayed with COVID. And this resiliency phase, like I said, we'll figure that out um, by the end of the year. I'd like to turn it over to Jennifer, who's gonna talk about um, what's happening in the second phase, the recovery re-imaging phase. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Jennifer Hardesty. I'm the clinical coordinator here at the clinic. Um, this slide is very exciting to me. As Larry said, um, it was almost like having a barbed wire fence around the clinic when all of this started. And as you can see, the arrow is going in the positive direction now. We, do, we are open, but we do have quite a few changes. Um, as you can see with this slide, before COVID, we were run much like um, your regular doctor's office, regular check-in, regular check-out. Um, and you can see on the right-hand side here, we've added a lot of steps in um, since the COVID pandemic began. We now do a phone screening. It's called a COVID uh, questionnaire 24 hours prior to the appointment um, to ensure that our patients have not had any recent exposures. They haven't had any symptoms. Um, we do a temperature check and a question review again at our side window that was mentioned earlier. All of our patients, whether they're medical or dental, um, check in at our side window at the patient parking lot prior to their appointment. Um, if they do come to the side window and they have a temperature that's over 99.4 degrees or they are exhibiting symptoms, we will see them, but we do convert the visit to a telehealth visit. Um, there um, is a personal escort once the patient um, is deemed appropriate to bring into the clinic. Um, our front doors um, are locked now and we do have a camera system that allows us to see who's at our front door and be able to buzz them in appropriately. Um, one of our nursing staff, our medical um, personnel will bring them back to the exam room um, and they remain in the exam room for the entirety of the visit. Um, they do wait to pick up their medications in the exam room, and once all of that is completed, then they're escorted out um, of the clinic as well. There's no stop um, as we used to have. Um, we have had patients that have had symptoms of COVID. We've had patients with COVID, unfortunately. We do not see those patients in the clinic. Um, we do do telehealth visits with them. We do have the capability um, to send them for testing outside of the clinic. And we also have the capability to be able to provide medications from our pharmacy for them. Um, at this point in time, we are not doing COVID testing. Um, we are what is called a CLIA waived laboratory that does not allow us the option to do testing. Um, going forward, if we do have new testing that becomes available and we're able to, we are certainly looking at that option. Um, we do have some several self-monitoring things that we've been able to offer to patients now. We're able to give them blood pressure cuffs, thermometers. Um, for our patients that may have chronic lung disease, we have um, what's called pulse oximeters that will allow them to measure their oxygen levels at home, and that's been wonderful. Um, one of the other steps that we've added in our process is that once an exam room um, has been, the patient's completed their visit, they've exited the exam room, they've exited the clinic, we do what's called a deep cleaning. Um, we use CDC approved um, cleaners and then the room must sit for 45 minutes um, until the next patient is allowed in. So that's another added step that we've put in place to keep people safe. And then telemedicine, this has been really exciting for us. I think all of us were 
a little hesitant initially, but um, once we were able to get it off the ground and get it running, um, it's just been so exciting to be able to offer this option to patients. Patients really like it. Um, it they're able to do visits um, from work. Uh, they're able to do visits from home. We've had a few patients that are able to do it in their car. And not only are we able to do telemedicine where we offer primary care and chronic care, we're also able to offer telecounseling through our psychiatrist, um, uh, tele, or, I'm sorry, telecounseling through Jasmine, telepsychiatry through Dr. Lopez, our psychiatrist. We have several specialties, um, rheumatology and also nephrology that are using the telemedicine platform to be able to see patients. Um, our diabetic educator is doing diabetic counseling and education um, through this medium with our patients. And then we also have teledentistry um, that allows us to meet some of our acute needs for patients that are in pain or may have an infection um, and need medications, but may not need to necessarily be seen right away. And then as, as I just said, there are just so many benefits to telehealth. We've really enjoyed being able to do this, um, being able to offer variety of care. We're able to keep patients out of the emergency room. Um, certainly if we're able to see them in the clinic, we will, but we're also able to offer that medium via telehealth, um, especially for anything that's not critical. It helps us to keep our staff, our volunteers, and our patients safe. Um, we've been able to eliminate some of what we call the social determinants of health that our patients um, are having to deal with. We're not so worried about transportation because they can do the visits from home. Um, it's also allowed our patients to have their interpreters present, often family members, um, sometimes children, grandchildren are the interpreters, and it's much easier for our patients to access them at home rather than bringing them into the clinic. Um, one of the other advantages, our patients don't have to miss work if they have been able to go back to work, and they also don't have to worry about child care um, because they're not having to leave their home. So there have been a lot of benefits um, to this medium. And I just wanted to uh, share a patient story with you. This actually happened at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, one of our patients, he's very proud to be one of the essential workers. Um, he works in one of the uh, large grocery stores in our area. And he's in his mid fifties, single man. He had um, gotten up in the morning, was doing a deep cleaning. He had told us of his kitchen. Unfortunately, during that process, um, he fell and lacerated his ear pretty severely. He called us. Um, we knew we weren't going to be able to, unfortunately, see him via telehealth because of his injury. So we did bring him into the clinic, assess the fact that he definitely needed to have sutures, but we didn't want to send him to the emergency room and risk exposing him to possible virus transmission, especially with his job. Um, we were able to get Dr. Robertson to see the patient. Um, he drove 45 minutes from his home to come see the patient. Uh, to do the sutures. The patient was so excited to be able to get this done, to be able to stay out of the emergency room, and he was actually able to get back to work um, the same day and continue to be able to serve people. Again, he was, he felt like his role as a grocery store worker was really, really important, and we were able to offer that service to him and get him back to where he needed to be. So that's one example of how we've been able to help our patients, um, even during this time of crisis. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't cover the most important part of our whole journey in the last uh, couple months, and that's the spiritual aspect. Here at Lackey, we pray daily at 8, 845 um, every morning. Um, we pray for a lot of things. Our patients are certainly our staff. Um, we pray for guidance. We pray for our resources. When the um, when COVID hit, we uh, decided that we, we probably needed to pray at the beginning and uh, at the end of the day. And so we started a second prayer session. And um, it was neat because of all the unknowns, um, because of all the, maybe the anxiety and fear, it was good to come together and be able to ask God to protect us. And, and so far he has. And so those hands over the clinic, uh, we really feel like there's a lot of tsunami outside of the clinic, but inside the clinic, it's a place of um, protection that God has kept us safe, given us the resources and said, you're doing our work. And so um, I, will, I will keep watch over you. 
And uh, the last thing we want to show you is um, just a humorous video of some of the changes that we've made here. Welcome to Lackey Clinic. We have installed a lot of new safety measures for our patients, and this is one of them. This is our check-in window and our medicine pickup. And if no one's at the window, we have a doorbell for you to push. But we do get a lot of interesting requests at this window. Do you have my medications? Do you have my groceries? Hi, is my dry cleaning ready? Hey, do you have my combo meal? And by the way, can I get a shake with that? This plexiglass is really very, very helpful to us. It protects us and makes us uh, feel very safe. I'm so glad that we have it. Although sometimes for our taller patients, it is a little bit of a challenge. With all this extra PPE we're having to wear, we're really up in our superpowers. Super MA! It is so great. We have a washer and dryer now at the clinic to uh, clean our PPE at the end of the day. And do you know what? I was running behind at work, so I stuck in a little load of my home laundry, and I won't have to do laundry at home tonight. Yay! <laughs> We've installed these curtains between the dental clinic and the medical clinic to prevent cross-contamination during this time. And so that's working really well for that and um, it's very helpful for us. Allison, is there something you wanted? I'm just getting out of the shower. Hi, we're really excited that we were able to purchase four fume extractors for our dental clinic. It helps eliminate all the aerosols out of the air and keep our patients and staff safe. And they're really powerful. Oh! Oh! Well, I just want to conclude that um, we have had we have had an increase in in new patients in the last three months. In fact, we're up twenty one percent. We have about fourteen hundred enrolled patients, and a lot of that uh, is the result of people losing their jobs and their insurance. And so, um, appreciate you joining this webinar uh, and listening to us. Um, but more importantly, we appreciate any support to help us continue our mission to the people that are medically disadvantaged. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope it was helpful for you to understand the changes we've made at the clinic. Just like Larry mentioned, our patient enrollment numbers have grown by 21%. With this increased demand, we hope you will consider giving and helping us care for those needing our help. You can make a donation on our website at lackeyclinic.org slash giving.